There's no problem with that. But in any case, if you change your mind, you can come and find me in the new small building that this branch possesses. I'll be waiting for your response, Sebastian stated. After that, he turned around and left. Jack did not say anything, but just watched as the two people that had come over leave. But still, he could already tell that there was something that Sebastian was definitely going to do about this matter. At the end of the day, how was it possible that a person of Sebastian's caliber could be sent over only to fail? Additionally, since he had already provoked the force organization, then, that implied that they would definitely do something about this matter. Although he had actually denied to join them right now, they would definitely try to cause him trouble to make sure that he joined them. And from the way that he could see it, it was clear that Sebastian did not want to make him an enemy. But, that did not mean that he could actually not do anything from the shadows to make sure that Jack went ahead to see refuge from them. At the end of the day, it was actually the force organization that possessed information about him and Celine. It was a good thing that they did not actually know about the fact that Denali had also become a superhuman. Additionally, she was not just a superhuman, but she had already reached the third stage of the superhuman level. If they came to know about that, and added to the information that Jack actually possessed 99 puppets that were actually at the superhuman level, they would definitely want to use every method possible to get them. At that point, they would definitely not care about making him an enemy or not. As for the 99 puppets, as long as they knew that they could actually be improved through the normal means, then, they would use all the resources possible in order to be able to improve their level. The reason behind that was the fact that the puppets could actually be controlled. They could not betray their master. And currently, Jack was the master. For that reason, they were not capable of betraying him no matter the situation that he was in. As for the transfer of control of the puppets to other people, Jack was not really sure if that was possible. In any case, he was not really willing to expose much about the puppets. They were going to work in the dark, and in case any of them was exposed, then, he was definitely going to just reveal that single one in the public, but that did not imply that he was going to let everybody know about them. As for the rest, they were going to continue to stay in the dark unless necessary. So, what are you going to do? Sylvia asked after Sebastian left. Nothing much really. In any case, you better give me whatever it is that you wanted to do, to activate, so that we can deal with that first. After that, if that person sent by your brother is not here, then, I will definitely leave this place. And, since I am bound by the contract to make sure that you are safe from whoever it is that you want to escape from, I'll have to bring you along. Jack responded. Sylvia pursed her lips tightly as she looked at Jack. At this point, the point that she really caught the most of the fact that Jack would actually bring her along if he was going to leave. Quite curious, she asked. Where is it that you are planning to go to? You'll know about that when the time comes. As for now, you can just go ahead and tell me what that item is. Jack responded nonchalantly. Of course, he was not going to tell her that he was planning to go to the Devon stronghold. If he informed her of something like that definitely, she was going to be against it. At the end of the day, what she was trying to avoid the most was to be taken back to her family stronghold. But, if Jack was going to take her there, then, she was definitely going to be against him. As for the reason why she didn't want to go there, she had never told him about it. Nevertheless, Jack didn't care. It was not as if he was going to continue staying here because she wanted to stay here. There was no way that she was going to affect his plans and the mission that he had been given by the system. He had to complete the mission before the timeline ended. Sylvia looked at Jack and felt a little irritated. Had it not been for the fact that currently they were cooperating, then she really wouldn't mind attacking him. Of course, that was just a thought, and even if they were not cooperating, then she would definitely not try doing that. At the end of the day, she was not as strong as Jack was. So, as long as she attacked him, then she was definitely going to be the one that was going to suffer at the end of the day. Okay, let's go. I'm going to show you the item. Sylvia responded after a moment of silence. Immediately after she finished speaking, she turned around and left the room without waiting for Jack's response. Jack simply shrugged his shoulders. Immediately after that, he called the Celine and the rest of the group that was present on the top floors of the building. When Celine arrived, Jack said, I'll be going out. I don't know how long it is going to be, but since currently you are busy with something, I won't disturb you with that. But I should be back before evening. It's okay. Currently, 
I feel that I have already adapted to the increase in my strength. And other than that, I am currently about to finish studying the materials that you gave me. What will be left will be the practicals now. Celine responded. Although she was curious about what Jack wanted to do, she did not really ask him about that. In any case, they were still within the stronghold domain. And within this stronghold number 17, she didn't think that there was anything tough that needed to be taken care of. Of course, she did not really know about Sebastian and what aim he had come over with. But even if she knew about it, she would really not have been disturbed with it. At this point, Celine possessed absolute trust towards Jack. She believed that he was capable of doing anything. Take care then. I'll make sure that I'll be back as soon as possible before dinner. Jack stated with a smile. Immediately after that, he headed outside of the building, before entering into Sylvia's car. Sylvia did not say anything to Jack after he got into her car. She just begun driving towards the new villa that she possessed, one that was located towards the outskirts of the stronghold. This was actually a place that not many people knew about its existence. Of course, that was except for a few members of the group that she was privately owning. It took them almost an hour to be able to reach there. And, Jack could not help but be a little bit mesmerized by the villa. This villa was quite big, occupying a space of about 1,100 square meters. It was painted white, without any other colors. Its design gave a majestic vibe, together with elegance. After entering into the villa, Jack found out that just as elegant as it looked from the outside, it was just as elegant inside. Almost everything inside here was expensive, made out of exquisite material. After entering into the villa, Jack took a seat on the couch in the living room. After that, he relaxed and waited for Sylvia. Sylvia, on the other hand, went upstairs. After about 10 minutes, she finally came back with a box. The box was dull brown in color, and it looked like nothing special at all. But still, since Sylvia had brought it here, that implied that there was definitely the item that she was talking about inside there. Although he was curious, Jack did not show any of that on his face, and just remained seated. Sylvia came with the box and placed it on top of the table in the center of the living room. The arrangement of the living room was in a way that the couches surrounded the chair. So, from where Jack was sitting, he could clearly see what was on the table. After placing it there, Sylvia looked at Jack. Looking at his expression that was filled with indifference, she hesitated for a moment. Although it was clear that Jack was not much interested in whatever it was that she wanted to reveal, but still, she was not sure if he was going to change his mind later on after seeing the item. But after thinking about the contract, since they had already agreed that Jack was not going to have any ideas about the item that she was possessing, then, she finally decided to reveal it. In any case, it was not as if Jack was going to take it with him. Click. The small lock of the box was finally unlocked. After that, holding the lid of the box, Sylvia took a deep breath before she opened it. After opening it, she turned it around and made it face towards Jack. Of course, her movements were without any hesitation after remembering about the contract that they had signed. Jack craned his neck and looked inside the box. Inside the box, he could see that there was actually something. It was something like a crystal bead. But, the size of that crystal bead was like that of a tennis ball. Quite curious, he got to his feet and approached the table. After that, he looked inside the box silently. He was trying to see if he actually knew anything about this. But, it was at this moment that he suddenly realized that he knew about it. Of course, the information that he possessed was actually from the intermediate level information of the information that he had received from the Force organization. Currently, it could be said that Jack was actually very familiar with several things within the stronghold. That was due to the fact that he had received the basic information from the Force organization. After that, with the multiplier effect of the system, the information was actually detailed, removing the conjectures and replacing them with facts. So, although it was true that this crystal bead was not actually mentioned in the information that he had received from the Force organization, but it was actually mentioned in the information that he had received from the system. Of course, it was clear that nobody within Stronghold Number 17 actually possessed information about this crystal bead. But, since Sylvia was not from this small stronghold, she actually possessed information about it. But, there was no way that she was going to reveal information about this crystal bead, considering that if the information was revealed, then, it was definitely going to cause trouble. 
And, this trouble was definitely not going to come from just within the stronghold, considering that within this stronghold, other than Sebastian, currently, there was nobody that was capable of dealing with her, but outside of the stronghold as well. Of course, something like this was definitely going to attract the attention of the people from the big strongholds. And if that happened, then, she would have no choice but to go back to her family if she wanted to keep this crystal bead. An ability crystal bead, I see. Jack stated as he looked at the crystal bead. Sylvia was a little surprised after Jack stated the name. She herself had actually taken some time to be able to realize that this was actually an ability crystal bead. But, for Jack, he had just looked at it without even touching it. But he had immediately realized that it was an ability crystal bead bead. She was not sure if Jack had actually possessed information about something like this, or maybe he had actually encountered an ability crystal bead before. But still, she was amazed. At this point, she felt that there was actually hope. Since Jack actually knew about this thing, then, perhaps he actually knew a method of activating it. And if it was activated, then, she was definitely going to benefit from it. Can you activate it? Sylvia asked with her eyes glistening with hope. Jack looked at her for a moment before he responded. To activate this ability crystal bead, a person needs to have an ability that corresponds with the ability that is present within the crystal bead. This was the first time that Sylvia was hearing about something like this. Since she was not much focusing inside the family during the time that she was inside the Devon stronghold, she did not really possess much information. An ability crystal bead was something rare. So, although she herself had actually seen one of them, she did not know about how to activate it. So, she was hearing this for the first time from Jack. Jack did not care about the reaction that Sylvia was having. Instead, he stretched his hand forward and grabbed the bead. The bead was crystalline, with a smooth surface. Other than that, it was quite cold to touch, but at the same time, Jack could feel that there was a hint of heat coming from within the crystal bead. It was just that, it was as if there was something that was trying to prevent the heat from coming out. Jack did not focus on that. Instead, he looked at the crystal clearly. He could see that the color of this crystal bead was somehow golden. It was just that the golden light was quite dim, and it was not bright, making it look like yellow and orange at the same time. For this one, we will need a person with a mental ability, an ability to control, hypnotize, and stun the mind for a moment. Jack stated. The moment that he said those words, Sylvia's mind went blank. At this point, she really didn't expect that Jack was going to be able to activate this crystal again. At the end of the day, Jack was a person at the superhuman level. But, he actually did not possess any ability. Of course, until now, Sylvia did not possess information about how strange Jack's genetic structure was. That was information that was not revealed to anyone other than the higher members of the Force organization and the two that were involved during the tests. Lightsfell.siamacronim, of course. There was also Derek's father who had actually received information. It was just that he received information about Celine and knew nothing about Jack. According to Sylvia, currently, she believed that the reason why the people from the Force organization were targeting Jack was simply because he had managed to reach the superhuman level before the age of 25. Is there any other way? We have to activate that crystal. It is so important to me. Sylvia questioned as she looked at Jack with hope in her eyes. It was just that, the hope in her eyes was not as deep as it was before. You should already know the answer. If there was actually something else that could be used to activate this ability crystal bead, then, I would have already informed you about that. Jack responded as he placed the crystal bead back inside the box. Sylvia of course understood Jack. After interacting with him for the past few days, she had understood that he was actually a straightforward person. And for that reason, he was not going to hide anything that she needed to know. Or rather, he wanted her to know. Sylvia's mind was running, trying to think of a solution. She really could not give up on this ability crystal bead. This was the only hope that she was having to complete her goal. And if she did not complete the goal, then, she could only go back to her family. Currently, the only person that she could think of that was capable of activating the crystal bead was actually her niece. It was just that, she was not willing to go there. Additionally, she knew that if she asked her niece to come over, then, it was going to cause trouble considering that her brother was definitely going to know about where she was earlier. But, that was something that she was not willing to allow to happen. 
Although it was true that Jack had asked for her to reveal information about herself in order to attract the attention of the person that had been sent over, she was not willing to take the risk. While Sylvia was thinking of a solution, Jack on the other hand was also thinking about how to solve this problem. But, no matter how much he thought about it, he could not find any solution to this matter. The ability crystal bead was something that was capable of granting someone an ability. It was just that, the ability crystal bead was always inactive the moment that it was found. To be able to activate it, it required the DNA of a person with the same ability as the one that was present within the ability crystal bead. After it was activated, it was going to be melted and turned into a serum that was going to be injected into the body of a person that wanted the ability. Well, this information was something that Jack had received from the intermediate level information from the system. Just as Jack was stranded on if there was actually another solution, another method of activating the ability crystal bead, a system prompt appeared in front of him together with Angel's voice sounding in his mind. Emergency mission program activated. After the host entered the stronghold domain with his authority upgraded to the second level, two emergency missions can be given at the same time. The system can help the host in activating the ability to control minds, but in return, the host will have to complete a mission given by the system. Jack's mind nearly exploded after hearing and reading the two prompts that had appeared in front of him. Why was it that he had not actually known that the system was capable of granting him something like that? Of course, he did not ask the system. He knew that if he asked the system, then it was going to tell him that he was supposed to explore the system all by himself. May I know what the task I will receive from the system will be like? Jack asked in his mind. At the same time, he was just thinking about what the system had said, not give him the ability, but instead, helping him in activating the ability. The task granted to the host will be related to the ability that the host will be assisted in activating. In this situation, since the host will be assisted in activating an ability that is related to his mind, the task that he would be granted will be related to utilizing that skill to do something. For the first time, the system was vague about the response that it gave. At the end of the day, Jack had actually not received the response that he was looking for. After all, what he had asked for was about the task that he was going to be given. But right now, the system has just given him some clues about the task that he was going to receive, but the task itself had not been revealed. Can't you just be straightforward? Jack asked in his mind frustratedly. Ever since the upgrade off the host's authority to the second level, there was a change on the way that the system works. For that reason, the host will have to explore many things by himself. Jack was getting a little frustrated by the response from the system. Right now, he had already began fearing about the missions that he was going to be given by the system. After all, the one that he had been given previously was for him to be able to conquer an entire stronghold that possessed several superpowers. And right now, the mission that he was supposed to complete was not even given to him before he accepted. That implied that no matter what, as long as he accepted to have an ability of his activated, then, that implied that there was no way that he was going to refuse the task that was going to be given to him. Jack was not really sure about this mission. After all, right now, the thing that he did not want was for him to be given another task that had a time limit. But, as he knew the system, it was definitely going to give him a mission with a time limit because there was not even a single time that he was given a timeless mission. Still, Although he was hesitating on that part, there was still another part that he was curious about. That was, the system claiming that it was going to activate an ability for him, rather than giving him an ability. From this, he could tell that he actually possessed an ability, but it was just that the ability was in an inactive form. That was something that he found strange, and he was really curious about the mysteries surrounding himself. After pondering for a moment, Jack finally came to a decision. Although it was actually a kind of risk for him to be taking something like this, but at least, until now, he had not gotten any risk mission from the system, something that was going to make him die. Of course, the mission that he had been given recently was something that if he went over without enough strength, then, he was definitely going to die if he just decided that he was going to conquer the entire stronghold. But still, that was something that depended on his choice. As for him being capable of conquering the entire stronghold, that was not a big problem. After all, it was not as if there was not anything that he could depend on. There was the system that was capable of increasing his income by 100 times. For that reason, 
he was capable of improving way faster than other people. Additionally, the resources that came from the system could be utilized immediately, not requiring him to engage himself in strenuous exercises that took a lot of time and effort. Okay, system. I accept the emergency mission, Jack stated in his mind. Confirmed. The mind ability of the host is going to be activated. This procedure is going to take five seconds. During these five seconds, the host will feel a little dizzy and a bit of a headache. The mission will be granted to the host as soon as the ability is activated. Activation will proceed in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The moment that the countdown hit zero, Jack suddenly felt that his mind had been flooded by a huge amount of information. At the same time, he felt slightly dizzy while at the same time, he felt that his mind was almost blanking out. Other than that, he failed himself experiencing pain. Although the system had actually said that it was only a small amount of pain, but a small amount of pain to the system was nothing to joke at when it came to reality. Still, Jack was able to stabilize himself, although he stumbled for a moment. The expression on his face did not change at all. At the end of the day, he had already received a warning from the system, so he was expecting that he was going to experience a lot of pain at this point. Sylvia was a superhuman. For that reason, she was able to notice that there was something that had changed. She had noticed that there was something that Jack had done, making him stumble. But that was something that was supposed to be impossible considering that Jack was not even moving around. Nevertheless, looking at the expression on his face, she decided not to ask about it. In any case, as long as there was nothing that concerned her, then she was not going to care. Instead, she just went back to thinking about the method that she was going to use in order to be able to activate the ability crystal bead. After all, depending on her niece was definitely something that was the last resort that she could utilize. After enduring five seconds of pain and discomfort, suddenly, Jack felt that his body was washed by a warm current. For a moment, he felt comfortable that he nearly moaned. But still, he was able to restrain himself. At that point, he felt completely relieved. At the same time, he felt that his mind was actually capable of processing a lot of information at the same time, enabling him to think faster than before. At this point, Jack suddenly felt impulsive. He felt that he wanted to use his mind to suddenly tell Sylvia to do something. But it was through his sheer willpower that he was able to prevent himself from doing something like that. Of course, the impulsiveness only lasted for about two seconds before it completely disappeared. The moment that it disappeared, Jack felt relieved. He then looked at Sylvia and said, I will help you with activating that ability crystal bead. Other than that, I will also process it for you, so that it can be injected into you, so that you can receive the ability. But still, you will have to pay me for the services of processing the ability crystal bead. Just after Jack had finished what he was saying, another system prompt appeared in front of him. Task for the emergency program. The host is supposed to find the whereabouts of his mother within one month, 30 days. If the host fails the mission, then, the ability that has been activated by the system will be removed completely from the host's body. Jack blanked out for a moment. To say the truth, the thing that he was least expecting from the system was actually for each to ask him to look for his mother's whereabouts. At the end of the day, how was his mother's location related to the system? But, although he was curious about this, he did not try to ask the system about it. In any case, the system was just going to respond that if he wanted to know about it, he had to complete the mission first. Are you sure about that? You know, you don't have an ability that is related to the mind, right? Sylvia asked. Of course, she did not know that Jack had actually been focusing on the system all along and had only heard the last part of whatever she was saying. I don't think I ever told you that I don't have an ability, did I? Jack asked with raised brows. When Sylvia thought about what Jack had said, she realized that it was actually true. All along, Jack had not stated even for a single time that he actually did not possess a special ability. It was just her and the rest of the people that assumed that he did not have an ability. Well, that was actually the truth. Though, this might actually not be true as well considering that the ability was activated by the system and not given to him by the system. Okay then. But what kind of compensation are you going to ask about? Sylvia asked. Of course, she knew about the processing of the activated ability crystal bead. It was just that, 
that was something that could only be done in the big strongholds. Only people in those big strongholds were capable of doing something like that. But right now, she believed that Jack actually possessed the ability of doing something like that. So, she was curious about what kind of price he was going to ask from her. Quite simple, actually. I would like resources from you. I want resources that are capable of influencing a superhuman. The better they are, the better the chances of me assisting you in the future are. Jack responded. Resources that are capable of influencing superhumans? But that is something that I can only get after we go back to the Devon stronghold and back into my family. But right now, I cannot offer you something like that because I don't have really have it. Sylvia responded with a frown on her face. If she actually possessed resources that were capable of affecting superhumans, of course, completely ignoring the ones that were available in the small strongholds, then she herself would have definitely been way stronger than she currently was. In actuality, if she was back in her family, then perhaps she would have already reached the ninth stage of the superhuman level. But because of the lack of resources, she was only able to reach the second stage of the superhuman level. Of course I know that. But who said that I wanted them right now? But still, what I'm trying to say here is that once you go back to your family, you will have to give me resources. Of course, they cannot be too shabby, right? Jack responded. Sylvia thought about it for a moment before she nodded her head in agreement. Currently, Jack could as well decide not to assist her in gaining the ability that was present within the ability crystal bead. And since she was the one that was currently desperate, Jack could go ahead and increase the price drastically, and there was nothing that she could do. After all, there was nobody that she could depend on in order to be able to process the ability crystal bead. But it seemed that Jack was not a profiteer. At least, he had offered her a choice of deciding on what she was going to give him as payment for his service. But still, there was something that caught her attention, and that was the fact that Jack had said that the better offer she gave, the better the chances of him assisting her in the future would be. Of course, had it been just anybody, she would have dismissed them. After all, if they were not from a family that was way above the one that she was from, what was it that they could help her with if she went back to the family? But it was completely different when it came to Jack. This guy was surrounded by mystery. And, right now, not only was he above her when it came to the power level despite the fact that he was younger than she was, but he was also in possession of a special ability. Okay, I have already accepted that. So, can you activate the ability crystal bead for me? Sylvia asked. She was getting a little impatient with the chat, considering that the ability crystal bead was just in front of her. For the past five years, she had been silently watching this ability crystal bead within the box. But there was nothing that she could do about it considering that Jack's mother and was not present to activate it for her. But now, there was a chance of it being activated. So, she was looking forward to gaining the ability. After that, the goal that she was having in her mind was going to be completed soon. At that time, it would not be much of a problem even if her brother got her back to the stronghold where her family was located. Before we do that, we will have to sign another contract. After all, how can I be assured that you will not go against your word? Jack stated simply. After that, he put his hand inside the pocket and took out a contract. Of course, this contract was retrieved from the system. Sylvia looked at Jack speechlessly. She had not expected that this guy was not trusting her, although they had already gotten familiar with each other. At the same time, wasn't there already a contract that was binding them together? That contract was enough for him to be assured that there was no way that she was going to betray him. After all, if she did something like that, then that was going to be against the clause that stated that her family had to support Jack and his organization. And who was it that stated that she was not part of the family? So, since she was a member of the family, she had to support Jack and his organization. So, why would she go ahead and betray him? In any case, knowing that no matter what she said Jack was not going to change his mind, she decided to go along with what he was doing. After Jack wrote on the contract form, he handed it over to Sylvia. After Sylvia read through everything, she took a hairpin from hair and used it to make a small wound on her finger. After that, she dropped blood on the contract form. Jack did the same thing. With the utility knife that he was carrying around with him, he cut a small wound before dropping the blood on the contract form. The moment that his blood touched the contract form, 
The contract form floated in the air before it disintegrated into pieces that divided into two and lodged themselves into the heads of the two people. With the contract finally in place, Jack went ahead and dropped another drop of blood from the same wound that he had made previously on top of the ability crystal bead. The moment that his blood touched the ability crystal bead, a golden light suddenly erupted from it. The light was so blinding that Sylvia and Jack were forced to close their eyes. Tatata. Suddenly, the table where the ability crystal bead was placed on suddenly began trembling. The intensity of the trembling of the table increased as time moved on, and after about 10 seconds, it suddenly stopped. Together with the stopping of the trembling, the golden light that had completely enveloped the entire living room of the villa suddenly dimmed down. Ask Jack and Sylvia opened their eyes. They looked at the ability crystal bead that was currently shining with a golden light. The intensity of the golden light on the ability crystal bead was as high as it could be. To process it, we will have to go back to my building. There, I have the required equipment that I can use to process it for you into a serum, Jack stated as he closed the box that possessed the ability crystal bead. Sylvia did not object that. Instead, she was actually anticipating the result of taking the serum. So, she did not say anything else and just picked up the box and followed Jack out of the villa. Along the way, Sylvia was driving the car maniacally. The speed at which the car was moving was almost two times the one that she had been using previously to go to her villa. After they arrived at the building that Jack and the group were living in, Sylvia was the first one to alight from the car. And, looking at Jack who was moving around as if he was not in a hurry, she could not help but ask, Why are you so slow? Or are you trying to make sure that I die from anticipation? Jack looked at Sylvia speechlessly. Then, he asked, What are you so anticipating of? Isn't it just gaining an ability? It is not as if you are going to be capable of controlling the moon and the sun, right? Sylvia did not really know what she was supposed to respond to that. But after a moment, she came up with a reason to why Jack had spoken to her in such a way. You know, you actually possess a special ability. And not only you, but even your girlfriend actually possesses a special ability as well. For that reason, to you, a special ability is nothing special. But still, you will have to know that it is called a special ability because it is special. Only a small percentage of people within the stronghold domain are capable of activating the special ability. As you can see, in the entire stronghold number 17, the only people that possess a special ability is you and your fiancé Celine. Sylvia stated as she looked at Jack with some envy in her eyes. Anyway, that is what you think. But I do believe that the number of people that do possess a special ability is kind of innumerable in the entire stronghold domain. It is just that many of them are kept as a secret from the public. Jack responded nonchalantly as he entered the ground floor of the building. The moment that Jack entered the building, Celine and the rest of the group came downstairs. Of course, if there was a person that was going to come into the building, they would definitely want to know who it was. But after noticing that it was Jack, they relaxed. But still, Celine felt that there was something wrong with this Sylvia. After all, she had been coming over again and again, although they did not have anything in common that they needed to discuss or do. Nevertheless, she did not say anything. In any case, it was not as if Sylvia was affecting the way that they were living. So, she could just ignore her presence here as long as she did not do anything that irritated her. After greeting Celine and the group, Jack went ahead and took his position on his workbench. Looking at Sylvia who was standing some distance away from him with the box, he looked at her with raised brows as he asked, Now, can you tell me who it was that was so anticipating of something not long ago? Looking at Sylvia who was standing some distance away from him with the box, he looked at her with raised brows as he asked, Now, can you tell me who it was that was so anticipating of something not long ago? It was only after Jack had said that that finally, Sylvia came back to her senses. She went ahead and handed over the box that was carrying the ability crystal bead to Jack. After that, she took a step backwards and looked at him, waiting for him to begin the procedure. Celine looked over with curiosity in her eyes. She couldn't help but ask, What is that? It is an ability crystal bead. It is used to give someone an ability. Rather, it is more like helping in the activation of an ability inside the body of a person. Jack responded. Of course, 
He possessed information about something like this considering that he had received the intermediate level of information about resources present within the stronghold domain. The ability crystal bead was like a stimulant. The moment that it was injected into the body after it was activated and converted into a serum, it was capable of stimulating the cells inside the body of a person. But of course, each ability crystal bead had an area of target. The one that they were currently possessing was the one that targeted the mind. So, the moment that it was injected into the body of a person, it was going to activate the cells that were related to the mind. After these cells were activated, they were going to be strengthened. After that, a person would be able to integrate with those cells as time went by, but they would be able to gain the ability from the first moment after the serum was consumed by the body and the cells were activated. That was actually the way that the ability crystal bead was functioning. Of course, there was a difference between granting an ability and activating an ability. There was a group of people that possessed an ability initially, either through birth or through acquisition. But still, through the ability crystal bead, the cells that were responsible to a certain ability were activated, therefore granting the people that did not possess the ability that specific ability that was related to the ability crystal bead. As Jack continued to explain about the ability crystal bead, he continued with the procedure that was required in order to be able to convert the ability crystal bead into a serum. Sylvia was also listening in into the conversation. She had not expected that Jack was this knowledgeable. At this point, she could not help but feel a little embarrassed. After all, she was from a big stronghold, but the amount of information that she possessed was nothing compared to the one that Jack possessed. It seemed that after she went back home, she had to make sure that she went through all the information that she could find. Currently, she could not access the information unless her aunt sent her the information. But if the information was sent over and she received it, then the location that she was currently in was going to be revealed. And if that was the case, then the person that her brother had sent over to look for her was definitely going to be able to arrive here way faster than expected. Jack, on the other hand, proceeded with the procedure. First, he ground the entire thing, turning it into powder. Of course, he did not do that using his physical strength, rather, he used the equipment that were present inside the room. After grinding it into powder, he began burning it inside a container. He increased the temperatures to a high degree, increasing it drastically until the moment that the entire powder was turned completely red. After that, Jack just continued heating the powder. He did so until it melted completely until it melted. Immediately after it had completely melted, Jack stopped the heating. Instead, he went ahead and began cooling it down using hydrogen liquid. And of course, the moment that he began using the hydrogen liquid, the temperatures within the room suddenly dropped drastically. It was a good thing that the liquid was not exposed directly into the air. But instead, it was injected into the container that was possessing the melted ability crystal bead. The moment that the hydrogen liquid touched the melted ability crystal bead, the ability crystal bead suddenly began freezing and in no time. It had completely cooled down before it was again turned back into solid. After he was done with this, Jack took the frozen ability crystal bead out of the container. Then, he began heating it at a temperature of about 600 degrees Celsius. The ice that was covering the ability crystal bead began melting. After a while, the temperature of the ability crystal bead began rising. But of course, Jack was not going to let it melt again. Instead, after he ensured that there was no coldness on the ability crystal bead that was currently in a weird shape, Jack stopped the heating. Immediately after that, he began grounding it again. After it was turned into a powder, he took another solution that was pale purple in color. Immediately after that, he dissolved the grounded ability crystal powder inside. The moment that the powder touched the liquid, there was the sound of something hot touching an extremely cold surface. At the same time, vapor suddenly begun coming out of the container that was possessing the pale purple liquid. Is it poisonous? Sylvia asked. After all, currently, everything that Jack was doing right now was not done inside a lab that was meant for research and dealing with things like this. So, she was afraid that perhaps they were supposed to be putting on masks during the time that this vapor was coming out. If it was poisonous, don't you think that I would be the first person that would die? Jack questioned back sarcastically. Immediately after that, he ignored Sylvia completely and simply focused on continuing with what he was doing. After about 30 seconds, 
The reaction between the liquid and the powder had finally completed. The powder, on the other hand, had completely dissolved into the pale purple liquid. Lights fell, it was just that, after the powder was dissolved into the liquid, the color of the liquid had changed completely. Now, it was no longer pale purple, rather, it was golden in color. It actually took the color of the ability crystal bead. Of course, something that the group could see was that the amount of liquid that was currently present was so low as compared to the amount of pale purple liquid that was used to dissolve the ability crystal powder. Initially, there was about 500 milliliters of it, but right now, it was just about one or two milliliters. Of course, the procedure was not completed yet. So, after the dissolution of the ability crystal powder was completed, Jack took the solution and placed it inside another machine. This machine was in the shape of an oven, and it actually functioned just like an oven. It was just that the temperatures inside this machine was several degrees higher than a normal oven. After placing it inside there, Jack decided to do something else. And of course, he decided that he was going to try and manufacture something that was going to be used to improve their abilities. It was just that the resources that they currently possessed was not enough to be able to produce anything important that was capable of affecting them. But still, he was trying to see if there was a chance that he was going to be able to create something that was capable of improving Samantha's abilities. After all, he had already promised her that he was going to give her something. But until now, he had not given her anything considering that he had been previously expecting that he was going to use something that he was going to gain after the multiplication of what he was going to receive from the Panthers organization. How long is it going to take for it to be completed? Sylvia asked. Of course, she had to get impatient because this was something big for her. To be able to gain a special ability, that was something that many people within the entire Stronghold domain yearned for. It should take about one hour or so. But after that, there is yet another procedure that is required before the completion. Jack responded without even looking at her. Sylvia did not respond. But at the same time, she just complained in her mind, Why is it taking so long? I thought that this thing was going to take a very short time. After that, I would be able to gain an ability. It had already been about an hour and a half ever since Jack began the procedure of creating the serum. Each and every process that he was involving during this time was actually consuming some time. So, it was obviously going to take some time before it was finally completed. On the other side, Jack was thinking about what he was supposed to do. After thinking for a while, he finally decided that he was going to produce something that was going to be required by several organizations within this small stronghold. Currently, whatever it was that he produced was not actually multiplied by the system by 100 times. For that reason, he could only produce something that was not present within this small stronghold, and after that, he could sell it for something big. Of course, if he sold it, whatever he was going to get was going to be considered as income. And of course, he was not going to take the star coins as a form of payment, rather, he was going to take something else, something that was capable of improving someone's strength.